Mangus wants to know how to know what route to follow when you're usering on defense. So user control is a huge way to improve your game, Gibbs. Give us a, a defense that you've been calling with the user in the middle. I mean, I'm kind of the user god, but I'll yeah. let you give this tip a little bit. Sure. Um, how do you know what? to follow it's it's more knowing it's more about projecting the formation that your opponent is in and then understanding what routes are the routes you have to defend from those formations so let's break that down here a little bit all right let's see how we can learn what routes to follow across the middle when usering on defense here Madden 18. So usering will make you a much, much better player. You should not be on a defensive lineman. You should definitely be on a linebacker, potentially on a safety, but most likely on a linebacker is going to give you the most range across the middle. Uh, against this formation, Gibbs, what are you thinking? And when a play happens, like how do you know? Tell me at the snap when you know what Bennett's route is. Sure. So the first thing I would say, though, when I when I see this formation, what I immediately think of, I think of, I think of two plays. I think of verticals and I think of PA post and then I immediately think I need to defend those types of plays right so when you're defending that you have to identify what what parts of those plays can you take away with hot routed zones or with a stock defense and then what routes on that play can you not take away which then you have to use her so let's kind of break that down here so you're dumping the ball off there so let's let's show PA post here for a second okay, okay? So you're going to run PA post, and I'm going to be in this defense. I'm not going to blitz or anything, but let's just run this defense. Uh, I'm in a standard cover two with hard flats. Um, now what I want you to do is just run the play. You're going to put Bennett on a drag, block Montgomery, and then motion Nelson out a little bit to the left and snap the ball. So this is one setup of it. There's, there's multiple, right? But what's going to happen is B opens up here. You also threw the post, so that's, that's fine. So if we go to instant replay, I'm going to show you here what this play looks like. So in this example, you can see we have the hard flat takes away the drag over here, but then also opened up was the corner route behind it. Okay, so that's where the problem comes. Now we have a corner route that's going to beat the hard flat. So now, by default, I need to find a way to take that away. So one good way to do that is if I keep a soft squat on the outside, right, and then if I put a hard flat over on that side of the field, that's going to help mitigate the corner and it's also going to slow down the flat the drag that you're running on that side of the field now you're going to play the same exact way snap the ball I'm not going to use her anybody we're just going to take a look so now the corner is taken away uh, he drifted down a little bit there but you're, you still aren't going to throw that ball and then what I then need to do is go in okay I, I made my hot routes I took stuff away what now do I have to do to defend against the rest of the, uh, of the play. So the other route that gets open is the is the, the post to, to cop. So in this instance, I could do a couple things. I could put Minter on a deep deep corner or a deep zone. I could match uh, Minter up one on one. Although I don't love a linebacker manned up on a on a receiver, so I'd probably put him in a deep zone. Uh, you saw that I had a flat zone out there. Now uh, now if I have this set up here, flat zone, a hard flat on the right, soft squat, deep zone. I now can just kind of sit back here and use her, try to use her at least in the middle of the field, that one route, and now I only have to hone in on one play, okay? Now here's what becomes difficult about this. Now you don't have four vertical as a quick audible, but you have the SE out play, so mm -hmm. go to that for me. Now one way that you'll see people run this is, is, the, is the following. We just showed it for cover two, drag your, your B receiver. Now let's say we're going to set this play up to be exactly the same way. I am anticipating PA post. So take a look. This is the same defense. Now my user's in here. I have to worry about this. Now you run a different setup. I have to be ready for that if I see this setup. Then I have to know where I have to go to make the user play. My job is this. My job is B. My job is to take away B and make you make a throw downfield. So now I know I have two responsibilities based on what two different plays you're running. If you run PA post, I stay in the middle and use your... How are you identifying at the snap what play I'm running? Are you looking for a key route or are you looking for... Like, I'm looking for the specific? first immediate threat, which is against PA post to be the tight end on the drag. But if I see the tight end break vertically downfield, I know it's not that and I know it, it's probably verticals, right? If it, if it uh, Or if it, you're running bunch tight end trail, right? I would see Adams runs a vertical stem and then he cuts over and then and there's a two corner patterns, right? 
uh, one to Cobb and then Adams runs the post. So you have to watch where the quick developing routes, usually the quick developing routes go come from Bennett, the tight end, or they come from the far right receiver on a drag as well. And then you have to identify where they are and you have to go to the user. You have to have a predetermined who got a guy I'm going to use her. Yeah. That's the name of the game. Who's the predetermined guy I'm using? You well, can't just kind of like... The predetermined guy you're using chill. is whoever your responsibility is on, on defense, so the area of the field you are on defense, and whoever runs there first. So wh whoever you think is going to run there. Yep. So, so for example, like say I run this play. Yep. So there's a couple different answers to this question. It really depends on kind of like your defensive philosophy. Right. Um, so this, right? So say you cross-manned up Cobb with this safety, and you manned up like... Adams with this safety. Mm -hmm. We talked about this in a previous tip, which you can go back and review. You are on the linebacker. You know you have to watch Nelson. Nelson and Bennett. Nelson and Bennett. Right. So you'd go to Nelson and then to Bennett. Right. Um, or My first step would probably be deep. Or you would go to Bennett, then Nelson. Right. But that's not using a guy. That's using an area. You're right. going to use the short middle, look for a drag, and then you're going to drop and get vertical. Right. And that's the same across anything but you know generally that you've manned up to try and stop y and b so you know you're going to have to pretty much follow x right. or a depending on who's been who's been doing what right and that's more of like an area of the field not necessarily a guy or a route um so what i find is like a play like inside switch if i'm going to use her the corner route like mm -hmm. that's like this formation i'm always thinking well i have to pretty much use her the corner route to a Mm -hmm. and then drop back across the middle if he's not on a corner route. Yeah. I'm going to look at the snap of the ball. I now know, like Once I see RB go out, I know that A is probably on the corner route because that's the concept from this formation. Right. Um, as far as like when people run plays like, like Crow Flat Corner, uh, or not Crow Flat Corner, uh, PA boot over here, I think this is the more the question our, our dude was asking. Like, because you did give a good explanation, but how do you know what route to follow? Like, it's all instinct. Like, this specific thing here, where you... It was more cover four, but... It, uh, like, this here. Like, how do I know when to stop chasing Cobb and fall back to Adams? That's so, instinct. So yeah. throw Adams, like, so it's this. It, it's, 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 it's instinct. So it's here, 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 here. Like, it's... It's knowing the timing when they throw it. Timing, when somebody good would throw the route, when they would no longer want to throw the route, when they're going to run into other defenders in the area. So, like, Cobb's the deep guy. He's the first responsibility. So that is the challenge. He gives he gets the most yards, so you have to take that away. So you need to know what position you can be in, first of all, to defend it. Because I don't need to be next to him. I just need to be able to get to, like, the zero on the 30, where that zero is on the field for the 30, as long as I get there... Make you make a late read on them. Yeah, you you can't throw that past me. Um, and then once he gets to the zero, but you can't actually physically press the button, have your quarterback do a full windup, and have enough arm speed to get it in the field, yeah. on the close side before he would be out of bounds, and he could potentially get there. So you know you're all right. Um, you then have to go back into the middle. Is that a hurricane? Man, so you've got Amber like Oh, boy. Uh, so I can then let that route go. I, went, I left a little bit early. Like, I want to wait till he gets more toward to, like, there where Bennett is before I drop it. But I then have to go back to my middle because my responsibility isn't to cover in this defense's area. If I vacate that totally because of Cobb, then you're going to have this middle area wide open. Look how open this middle is because I'm not standing there mm -hmm. in the middle. Granted, there's no routes there, but that's okay. I have to eventually then go back. Uh, when I cross it. Right. Uh, and so, to shift back, it, it's like, it, it looks instinctual, but it's partly just knowing when people throw stuff yeah. and how, like, routes and, and go. One one thing that I'll say, like, what the best players do is they identify these formations, and they, they'll, for the most part, you could catch them off guard a couple times or some new plays that they're not used to seeing, but what they do is they understand the strengths of those formations, and they know the routes that they can't hot route and defend. Right. Get, so so call this play. Like, once I see Bennett go th over there, or I see the halfback come out of the backfield on an angle route, like, a halfback never runs an angle. Like, if the halfback's going to run an angle route, like, he never 
starts that part of the field on an angle before he cuts back. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not like he runs a table route. Go give me inside switch. Like, the difference between inside switch, where he runs like this, like, an angle route doesn't look like that. It, he runs more towards Bennett if he's on an angle route. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, like, it's a different angle. And then... It starts with knowing you know, the plays that will beat you from it, and then identifying them at the snap. And learning concepts. Like, if Bennett and Nelson run flat patterns, then you know it's probably corner strike. Because you know the only time Bennett is going to run a flat is if it slants or if it's a corner route. And then right. you just start bailing and getting over there. Right. So at the snap of the ball, you have to look for like a key route. It's either a corner route to the tight end, that vertical stem, or uh, an angle route from the halfback, or flat patterns, because that means corners. Those are things like you can look for. I like to just go, 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 turn a corner. You, like, you know that's coming there. Um, it's instinctual, but hopefully those are some things that you can see uh, to give you give you a heads up at least.